What's up guys, this is gonna be a quick follow-up video to the one that you saw the other day on my channel where I compared the new 2990WX Threadripper 2 chip to the 7980XE and to the i7-8700K. Following all the testing that I did for that video, I decided it was about time that I rebuild my system into what is optimal for me and my workflow, and that's what we got right here. I finally got to take advantage of the sort of new Lian Li PC-011 Dynamic. I hadn't had this case for a while. I finally was able to get one about a month ago or so, and I didn't necessarily have a specific use for it until I decided to do this build. But, drum roll please, what I decided to go with in here is the i9-7980XE. It just fits better with what I need to do on a daily basis. And the majority of that is video editing. The 7980 is just the best chip out there right now for that. So to be honest, it didn't really make much sense for me to stick with the 2990WX when it was mediocre at best in those tasks. So that's what we have in here, the i9-7980XE, and it is in the ASUS X299 Prime Deluxe motherboard. I wanted something that not only went with our white aesthetic, but also was just standard ATX size. The PC-011 Dynamic can technically fit EATX motherboards, and I do have other ones here, like the EVGAX299 for the Win-K, but, Doing so would cause an overlap with some of the cable routing channels. And also I did want to utilize that back wall for a 360 millimeter radiator mount, which as you guys can see, we did do. Now that is the new Cooler Master ML360R. I don't know, if I screwed that up, I'll put a correction up here or something like that. But I think it's the ML360R. It has addressable RGBs on all three fans and also on the pump top. So it does look really good. And I filled out the rest of the system with the same Cooler Master addressable RGB fans, which not only means that I could sync up all the lighting effects, but I also can use the same control scheme. I don't have to have multiple different controllers in there. And I'm actually not even using the addressable RGB header that's on this motherboard. It's all being controlled with the Cooler Master little controller boxes that come uh, with their fans and with the cooler. Performance wise, as far as uh, overclocking, I have this set at 4.2 gigahertz at 1.2 volts on a 24 seven overclock. Uh, that's, it's been extremely stable for me. I've had absolutely no crashes or issues like anything like that. And the cooler keeps the CPU at probably around the mid 70s, mid to high 70s when doing exporting in Adobe Premiere, which is basically the most stressful thing that this system does on a regular basis. And I'm very happy with that. I did, when I initially did the install, push it further than that. This is not a deleted chip, uh, just straight out of the box, retail packaging and all. And I had it up at 4.4 gigahertz, but that was at a higher voltage and it was getting into the mid 90s. It still was 100% stable in every test that I ran, but I didn't want to keep it running that hot uh, for 24 seven operation. So I backed it off to 4.2. And I think that so far that's been great for me. I'd actually be curious to see how high I could go, how far I could push it. Uh, if I maybe got this in some, some kind of open air test bench with some better airflow going on or something like that, maybe we could get this to 4.5, 4.6. Uh, I mean, because like I said, 4.4 was 100% stable. So I'm definitely happy with the choice to go with this processor. I think that overall the performance has just been outstanding and I have absolutely no complaints. Uh, as you guys can also see, I did go up to 64 gigs of memory. This is the new Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro memory. I really do like the way they look. I 
think the RGB implementation is even better than on the G-Skill Trident Z dims. And it's probably the best looking memory that I have right now. It's got, kind of going in the spiral rainbow pattern, which definitely matches what we have going on here with the Cooler Master fans. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I don't have any additional lighting inside this case because with the two, the front and the side glass panel and the lighting provided by all the RGB LEDs that we have throughout the case, this is plenty illuminated in here and I am not lacking for lighting in any way. Uh, but getting back to the memory, this is the CL16-3200 speed kit. I considered going CL14, but to be honest with you, there was a significant price difference and I think the CL16 kit is performing just fine for me. I was able to enable the XMP profile and it just clicked up to 3200 and stayed there without any issues. So that is one of the benefits of using an Intel platform at this time versus AMD, whereas AMD is, has been getting a lot better as far as memory speeds go. A lot of times you do have to do quite a bit of fiddling to get them to run at the, the, their rated speeds, whereas with Intel, it's basically just one click and you're there. So that is something else to consider if you're ever really on the fence about Intel versus AMD is that memory compatibility is just better with Intel. But just to summarize for you guys, the rest of the build, the only storage that I have in this box is two Samsung 960 Evo M.2 NVMe SSDs. One of them is underneath the chipset heatsink. There's a, an M.2 heatsink under there as well. And then one of them is on this M.2 little riser card. There's a one terabyte OS drive that also holds most of my programs and whatnot. And there's a 250 gig scratch disk. And that's the only storage that's in this box, which is why it's not quite as heavy as some of the other systems that I have built. I've offloaded all of my storage to a 20 terabyte RAID array that plugs in via a USB-C. So that just sits right next to the system and kind of makes the build process here a lot less complicated. You don't have to run SATA data cables or additional SATA power or anything like that or worry about mounting multiple four, six, 10 terabyte hard drives or anything like that. So made the build process really simple. I loved building in this case. I really am starting to like this two chamber design where the majority of the cabling and the power supply and whatnot are on the backside. I guess I got a text. But that does allow the entire main chamber to remain very clutter free and the build process while you're in this main chamber to be very smooth. There's a lot of room inside of here for doing whatever you need to do. There's plenty of room up top if I wanted to add in another radiator for some reason, if I wanted to do a custom loop or something like that. Also, I think this case just looks absolutely dynamite. I'm really happy that I put this system in this case. I think this is a perfect implementation of what you can do in here. And so far, I've just been really happy. As you guys can see, I also reused my uh, EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti SC2, uh, which I've used in many builds in the past, and it just continues to be the best GPU for me for this, uh, for what I do. I, I will likely be upgrading to one of the RTX cards whenever they come out, whenever I end up getting one. Uh, but for now, the 1080 Ti is just perfect. I do have end sourced cables in here. This was a set of extensions that Joey had made for me a year or two ago now, and I only had one EPS cable, and this motherboard needs two, so right now, the second EPS cable is just the stock cable, but he's gonna be sending me over another EPS, but this is their, this is his acid purple with silver stripe, and I think it went just perfectly with the other aesthetics that I have going on inside here, so. I mean, overall, this wasn't necessarily an, an in-depth video on the performance of this system. It's a 7980XE with a 1080 Ti. It, it's just an absolute monster. Uh, I've been able to uh, export most projects in Premiere in basically real time, if not faster, depending on how complicated they are. Uh, ones with heavy correction and, and stuff like that do take a little bit longer, I guess. But relative to what I was working with with AMD, uh, and even comparing it to the other Intel parts like the Z370 stuff, the, the 8700K, you just can't beat this for Premiere. So that's, that's the main reason why I switched over. But overall, super happy with the build. This is what I'm gonna be using for the foreseeable future. I mean, I guess I, I, guess I always say that, 
but at the same time, uh, I don't have any plans to, to change anything in here, except maybe the GPU, uh, until the next Intel parts are, are announced and released. So we'll see even how they perform, if it's even worth it uh, to upgrade the 7980, because I can't imagine that um, this is gonna get outdated anytime soon. But that's it guys, this video probably went a little bit longer than I had intended, but I hope you enjoyed the glamour shots of the new system and a description of what I got going on on a daily basis. If you like this video, hit that like button, get subscribed to the channel if you are not already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.